back for Team Marion. Number 14, Aiden Mac Manaway. And now for tonight's whole team, Team Viga Monterrey, Monterrey, Mexico.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rent One Park. Hey, I'm Chuck Morgan, the voice of the Texas Rangers Baseball Club, and my hometown is Marion, Illinois. On behalf of everyone who considers Marion to be home, we want to welcome the players and visitors from around the world to this year's Colt World Series. We hope you're finding Marion and Rent One Park to be a place of friendly faces and a great venue for great baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Colt World Series baseball time in Marion. Play ball! Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Rent One Park. Night three of the Colt World Series has a marquee matchup here this evening. As it will be Team Mexico from Monterey, Nuevo Leon, Mexico, taking on the host city, Marion, tonight. Both of these teams have won their opening games. They had first round buys. Marion won last night as they knocked off Greensboro 9 to 1. And uh, Team Mexico, a hard fought 5 4 win over Team Germany. And that was on Friday night. Both of these teams, this is not an elimination game in this tournament, but this could go a long way to, determine, to determining who one of the top teams would be remaining in this tournament. Game number 13 overall in the bracket and the final game of the evening on a beautiful night for baseball once again in southern Illinois. Right now, partly cloudy sky, 76. The chance of rain has disappeared for this evening. And it is, I am looking forward to calling this game for you. I'm Dave McKenzie. Both teams have uh, been heard their national anthem. We've had the recognition of uh, baseball and softball all-conference players in between games and just been a great day updating scores from today, starting off this morning at 11 o'clock. Southern Illinois knocked off Japan and eliminated Japan from this tournament in a 14-8 win. Then it was Greensboro, North Carolina beating Aroma Park 5-4, eliminating Aroma Park as it is elimination day. Then you saw Harlingen, Texas, who jumped out to a 1-0 lead, but then Covina, California got on a roll and uh, beat uh, Harlingen, giving them their first loss of the tournament. Coni uh, Covina now 7-1, the winner over Harlingen, Texas, and they have advanced to play tomorrow evening at 5 o'clock. It's been quite the uh, day. We've seen two in-the-park home runs. Drew Barrington from Southern Illinois and in the park home run. He had five RBAs, RBIs. He had quite the day. And then Ian McMillan had an inside the park home run as well. We're ready to go. Marion is the visiting team in this ball game. And Mexico, the home team. And leading things off is going to be Brandon Bergen. Brandon, the center fielder for Marion, fouls off the first pitch for strike one. Defensively and in the outfield, Humberto Cruz is the starting pitcher for Team Mexico. He has Daniel Garza behind him in left, Caleb Condi in center, Andres Garza in right. Uh, Gerardo Martinez at third, Alessandro Falcone at short, Patricio Torres at second, and Remigio Quintanilla is at first. The 101 pitch in for a strike. 0 and 2 behind the plate. Aiden Cardonia doing the catching, and Humberto Cruz has an 0-2 count on Brendan Bergen. It'll be Cruz Harlan and Camden Raditz. If anybody gets on, the number four batter, Caleb Sievers, will come to the plate. Looking forward to this matchup tonight. Perfect night for baseball. One ball, two strikes, nobody out as we're just underway. Here at Rent One Park. Humberto Cruz looks in and gets his sign. Steps off now, looks back in. One ball, two strikes, nobody down. Bergen the batter. Here's the pitch. Lined on the ground. It's going to get through for a base hit. 
Good start for Marion as Brendan Bergen singles up the middle to get things going for Marion. It's going to bring up Cruz Harlan, the shortstop. Cruz in that game against Greensboro, North Carolina. Cruz singled twice, and he tripled, scored a run. Three for four from the plate. So Brendan Bergen, the runner at first. Here's Cruz Harlan at the plate, the shortstop for Marion. From the left side, takes a ball inside. And that was 86 on the gun from Humberto Cruz. Outfield is playing straight away. The dimensions here at Rent Run Park, it's 320 down each of the lines. 400 to straightaway center field. This ball's lifted foul and out of play. 392 to the power alley in left, 375 to right. We have not seen any home runs clear the fence here yet, as of yet in this tournament. But as I mentioned, two in the park home runs just today. We hadn't seen one of those in the first two days of competition. This is game 13 of the bracket. Dominican Republic was the first team to be eliminated as they had to forfeit their two games because of travel issues. Then you saw Germany eliminated. Then you saw Japan eliminated earlier this afternoon and Aroma Park eliminated. As they throw over to check the runner in Bergen at first, he gets in underneath the tag. Fantastic crowd here on a Sunday night, 8-20 for the first pitch. Takes that one for a strike. The people of Southern Illinois and all of these teams have really come out to support this year's Colt World Series. By far the biggest crowds we've seen in the five years it's been here. And it's going to be back for five more through the year 2027. Here's the one, two, swing and a miss, struck him out. Out number one. It's a strikeout, swinging. And that's going to bring up Cam Raditz. Raditz. Takes the first pitch for a ball. Camden wears number 33. He bats from the right side. He's from Effingham High School. Effingham Hearts. Runner at first in Bergen. This is chop foul off the front of the home dugout to our right. The dugout of Team Mexico. crowd into this game early a great atmosphere great introductions the national anthems for both Mexico and the United States just a perfect night for baseball we have the best view right here in our perch directly behind home plate it's been a lot of fun calling these games once again this year and we're glad to have you everybody that's watching online thank you so much one ball one strike one out Camden Raditz is the batter. Humberto Cruz, the pitcher. The pitch in there for a strike. A little off-speed pitch, 72 from Cruz with one down. Marion has the one hit. That's the runner at first in Bergen. Cruz taking his time. The tall right-hander gets his sign. Comes set from the stretch, the pitch. Catches the outside corner, got him looking, strike three, two down now. Big strikeout, 75 mile an hour, 71 mile an hour bender. And that is out number two. Caleb Seberg will dig in now. 
Caleb. Stands right on top of the plate. Sabres from Carmi White County takes the first pitch for a called strike. Tins Carmi White County High School. Bergen is have yet has not tried to steal. I think he's still trying to get a read on Humberto Cruz to see what kind of move he has. Has a quick step over and a throw over. And Bergen gets underneath the tag. There's two down. Outfield is playing straight away. Garza in left. Condi in center. Garza, Andres Garza in right. Here's the 0-1. Half swing. Takes it to 0-2. Seabers not happy with himself. Pretty indecisive on that. No balls, two strikes, two down. Runner at first. Humberto Cruz comes to the plate up high. Ball one, one and two now. Infield is playing back, except they hold Bergen at first. The throw over. Just a little soft toss from Cruz. Keep him honest over there. Great atmosphere. You can hear the fans in the background. This is going to be a fun night. One ball, two strikes, two down, one on. Up high, misses two and two. 86 pass. 86 mile an hour fastball from Cruz. Has one of the best ball fastballs that we've seen in this tournament. Couple have been around 85, 86. But it seems like he's consistent with that fastball. Little bender outside, runs the count full now, three and two. That'll give Bergen, Brandon, Ber Brandon Bergen, a chance to run here. With two down, he'll be off on the pitch. Caleb Seavers climbs in. He's ready to go. Full count, 3-2. Two. two outs. Runner goes. Here's the pitch. Down the middle, caught looking. Strike three from Humberto Cruz. Retires the side. And we are going to head to the bottom of the first no score. Monterey Nueva Leon, Mexico is on their way to bat for the first time here at the 2022 Colt World Series. Bottom of the first inning here in game number 13 of the Colt World Series as uh, Team Mexico comes to the plate for the first time. 
pitching for Team Marion, it's going to be Aiden McManaway on the mound. And leading things off for Mexico, it's going to be Andres Garza at the plate. Bats from the left side. Garza stands up tight to the plate. First pitch from McManaway is misses for ball one. Defensively for Aiden McManaway behind him. Sievers in left, Bergen in center, Fricker in right, and pitch from McManaway misses again, 2-0. Oh. On the infield from third to first, Raditz, Harlan, Hari, Griffith. Behind the plate, it is Jack Ford. And Aiden McManaway is the pitcher for Marion. He is from Altamont. Left-hander looks in. Count one and one. This ball's lined toward the gap in left center field. It's going to get down for a base hit. Lead-off single for Mexico from Andres Garza. And just like Marion, it was a lead-off single to start the game. And Garza's aboard. And that's going to bring up Humberto Cruz, the pitcher for Team Mexico. The Mexican zone champion taking on the Colt World Series champions from 2021 as Cruz squared to bunt showed it, but nothing happening to pitch outside for ball one. Game number four of the day here at Rent One Park. They started at 11 o'clock and pretty much been continuous all day. Shows bunt once again, takes a strike, evens the count now one and one. Humberto Cruz, the starting pitcher this evening, wears number two on his back, runner at first in Garza. They don't check the runner at first, back easily. Marion's outfield straight away. They're in at the corners. They want the double play up the middle. Playing in to prevent the bunt, and he lines this one out of play to the right into the seats to our right. LED lighting here at Rent One Park, which is new this year. And it just lights up the entire field as Cruz Found that one straight back. No dead spots. It's just fantastic lighting. And, of course, new ownership of Rent One Park. This was the home for the Southern Illinois Miners who played in the Frontier League. And ownership decided at the end of last summer that they did not choose to sell the team. They disbanded the Southern Illinois Miners, put the stadium up for sale. And Chad Zimbro and Rodney Kamenis and their group of investors, with the help of the city of Marion, purchased the ballpark. And if you know anything about Oasis Outdoors, Black Diamond, Harley Davidson, they're about events. And this is going to add to that ground ball toward short. Harlan to second for one. The throw to first is not in time. As a matter of fact, hits off the front of the dugout. But the force out at second goes 6-4 on the put out. That's the first out. Cruz reaches on the fielder's choice. And that's going to bring up Remigio Quintanilla. He'll bat from the left side. Quintanilla in his first game. Singled, grounded out, and popped out. He was one for three in the win over Germany, 5-4. Bats from the left side with the runner at first in Cruz. They check on Cruz with the toss over there. No zip on it from Aiden McManaway. On deck for 
Mexico, Alessandro Falcon. The pitch up high, off speed, 66 from McManaway. Outfield now for Quintanilla, giving him the left field line. Pitch outside, catches the outside corner for a strike. One ball, one strike, one down. Not much of a breeze here at Rent One. If you look at the flags in center field, not much movement there. Just a little wisp. Outside corner, strike two from McManaway. One down, neither team has scored yet. We're in the bottom of the first inning. The pitch, swing and a miss, struck him out. 69 mile an hour. Off speed pitch from McManaway, two down now. And Alessandro Falcon. Falcone. Bats from the right side. Heck of a ball player. Short stop. You'll see a good glove. He lines this one into right. It's going to get down. Base hit. Misplayed by Fricker in right. Gets away from him. Loses it. Here comes Cruz around third. He's going to score with no throw. Stand up double for Remigio. Excuse me, Alessandro Falcone. And Mexico takes the lead here in the bottom of the first inning. Falcone with the pitch. Drove it into right field, and Morgan Fricker had it hit off his glove, and he lost it for just a couple of minutes and a couple of seconds, and that's all it took for Cruz to round the bases and score the first run of the game. And Falcone winds up at second with the double. Gerardo Martinez at the plate. Martinez bats from the left side. 1-0 is our score. One run on two hits now for Mexico. You had the leadoff single. And Garza, he was eliminated on the 6-4 put out on the fielder's choice. Martinez swings and strike two. Falcone, the runner, at second. McManaway looks back at the runner. Now comes to the plate. Popped up. Going out towards center. Bergen over. Calls for it. Makes the catch for the third out. But Mexico gets on the board first. They lead this ball game as we head to the top of the second. One to nothing. Marion is coming to the plate. This is your 2022 Imagine. Colt Imagine World Series New live from Route 1 Park in Marion, Illinois. Imagine discovering new ways to feed the world and imagine telling stories that need to be heard. Imagine fighting for social justice and imagine traditions that bring us together. Imagine unique environments and imagine going from the classroom to the boardroom. Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Imagine the possibilities.
Top of the second inning here at Rent One Park. I'm Dave McKenzie. Mexico just took the lead in the bottom of the first inning. They're up 1-0. One run on two hits for Mexico. Marion looking to score their first run. They have one hit, and it'll be the five, six, and seven hitters. Drake Moss to lead things off. Morgan Fricker and then Jack Hari. If anybody gets on, Dawson Griffith. Drake Moss leading off here at the top of the second. Moss from Goreville. Plays baseball for Coach Tripp at Goreville High School. Humberto Cruz, his second inning to work for Team Mexico on the mound. The right-hander deals, curved balls, hammered foul down the third base line. The count now 0 and 2. This is day three of this Colt World Series. Game number 13. As you look at the bracket, and of course, you can always get in more information if you go to the website. Two websites you can go to. You can just go to coltworldseries.org or you can visit pony.org. P O N Y. And a swing and a miss. Strike out. The ball gets away from the catcher, Cardonia, and the speed of Drake Moss puts him on first. Wild pitch. Puts Drake Moss at first base. As Aiden Cardonia couldn't come up with the with the ball. And now right fielder Morgan Fricker will come to the plate. Morgan wears number eight. Bats from the right side. Nobody out. And the pitch on the outside corner, 84. From Humberto Cruz. Again, you can visit ColtWorldSeries.org or Pony.org. P O N Y. Protect our nation's youth. That is what Pony Baseball stands for. The first Colt World Series was held back in, I believe, 1953. Abe Key, who is the president of Pony Baseball and Softball, is in the park. Called strike outside corner. And here within uh, a couple of games, hopefully we'll have the ability to have him come in and spend some time with us and we can talk about the organization, all the things it does. Of course, Pony held an 8U tournament here at Rentwin Park a few weeks ago that was highly successful. And this Colt World Series for the 16U, which is what you're watching, has been extended for five more years in the strike foul tip at the plate from Fricker. Puts the count at 0-2. Last Monday night, the Marion City Council met and voted to extend the contract for five more years. First time that Pony Baseball has signed a five-year contract. Foul tipped straight back. Of course, this tournament was held for 40 plus years in Lafayette, Indiana. And has been here in Marion for the last five. I've had the pleasure of calling all five years here from Rent One Park. No balls, two strikes, nobody out. Runner at first in Moss. Chopped it left side, and it's going to roll foul. Valdez came charging in, excuse me, Martinez. And he picked it up on the foul side of the line. So it returns everybody the original position. Drake Moss returns to first. Morgan Fricker picks up his bat. He asked for a little bit of rosin. And his buddy and on-deck partner, Jack Hari, helps him out with the rosin bag. Now he digs back in, right side of the box. The 0-2 pitch from Humberto Cruz comes set from the stretch. The pitch, swing and a miss, struck him out. 72-mile-an-hour 
curveball. And that's the first out of this inning. Here's Jack Harry, the second baseman. Jack, number six, and Jack from Marion. His dad, Matt, is the coach for this Marion team. Takes the pitch up and in, up high, rather, for ball one. Berto Cruz looks in now. Moss still at first. After the leadoff, reaching on the strikeout, the drop third strike. One ball, no strikes. One down. Outfield straight away. The pitch right down central, 84. On our fastball from number two, big Humberto Cruz. Right hander steps off the back of the mound, adjusts the cap, wipes the sweat from his brow, sets the right foot on the first base side of the rubber. From the stretch comes set the pitch. Another strike, 83. Heat is not an issue at the ballpark tonight. 72 degrees currently as the fun, sun has set. Cruz, the pitch. Curveball, and Hari just kind of flipped the bat out at it. It was outside. It would have been a ball, but he spoils the pitch and stays alive. Going to keep the count one and two. Aiden Cardonia gave chase on that little pomp foul into the seats. Humberto Cruz ready to go. One and two. Low, two and two. With one down, they check the runner, throw over to first. Drake Moss, head first dive back to the bag safely. This pace of this game is considerably slower than the previous game. Just misses outside, 86 mile an hour fastball, and it was framed right there by Aiden Cardonia. Home plate blue says no, it was outside. I believe there's a conversation taking place between home plate umpire and Cardonia from Team Mexico. Here's the 3 2, check swing. They say he did go around, struck him out, but Drake is able, Drake Moss is able to steal the base. Hari struck out swinging. That's two down now. And Dawson Griffith will step in. It was a check swing by Hari. And they did appeal to the first base umpire. And he said, yes, he did go around. And it was pretty obvious. Pitch was high in the zone. And Hari tried to hold up, just couldn't. So now, Dawson Griffith at the plate. Dawson hails from Harrisburg. Where's number 25? Here is the 1 0 pitch with the runner at second base. Inside misses 2 and 0 now with two outs. Dawson Griffith attends Harrisburg High School. Mark McGuire fan.
Favorite subject in school is anything agriculture-wise, ag classes. Foul tips the pitch. He was on that. Didn't miss it by much. It was straight back. Off to the netting. Just below us here. Two balls, one strike, two down. Curveball misses low. Cruz frustrated with that. Call. Three balls, one strike, and two down. Humberto Cruz throws it inside and walks. Dawson Griffith. And it's going to bring up the number nine hitter in Jack Ford. Now the catcher, number nine. Jack from Harrisburg as well. Bats behind his teammate. Dawson Griffith. Jack Ford, an outstanding catcher for Marion. Tim Anderson, fan from the Chicago White, Fa White Sox, hopes to go to TCU. Strong baseball program there. Finished second in state in baseball in the eighth grade. Proud of that fact. He should be. Swings at the first pitch and misses. 0-1 from Humberto Cruz. Top of the order on deck in Brendan Bergen. Mexico leads this game one to nothing with two down here in the top of the second inning. Humberto Cruz. Steps off. Looks back at Drake Moss at second, the runner for Team Marion. Spin move as Balcone comes sneaking in behind Moss. Crew spotted the move. Reverse pivot and through. Drake Moss was ready and got his foot back on the back. Gets a nice lead, looks back, watches the second baseman. Balcone tries to get in behind him again. The pitch is off the plate. One and one. Not much shifting in the outfield. For Jack Ford. Expecting to hit straight away. Maybe a bit of a gap in right center. Pitches outside. Two and one. There's two down. Drake Moss started off the inning, struck out, but he reached on the pass ball. Then you had Morgan Fricker that struck out, Jack Harry that struck out, Dawson Griffith batting here with two down, swings and misses. And that evens up the count two and two. So with a runner at second base in Drake Moss, two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Humberto Cruz, a strike from getting out of the inning, the pitch. Oh, just didn't miss by much, 85 mile an hour fastball. And not getting that outside call from the home plate umpire. So we'll try again. Same scenario, 3-2. Lined foul and out of play. Look out down that left field side.
3-2 with two down. Here's the pitch. Misses. And Jack Ford gets the walk, and the bases are loaded. I said one down earlier, one on. Actually, there was two on. Forgot about Dawson Griffith down at first base, and now the bases are loaded. Top of the order we go. Brendan Bergen started the game off with a single. And this is the best scoring opportunity in the game so far for Marion. Two outs, bases loaded. Top of the order, Brendan Bergen at the plate. Humberto Cruz from the stretch, the pitch. Right down the middle for strike one. Chad Ozy, the umpire behind the plate this evening. Bergen, anxious at the plate, ready to go. The 0 1 pitch. Swings at a ball outside, 0 and 2. <clears throat> no balls, two strikes. And the bases are loaded, and Cruz steps off. Again. Wipes his brow, adjusts the cap, steps on, gets the sign, set, pitch, swing and a miss, struck him out. Big strikeout from Humberto Cruz for Team Mexico with the bases loaded, gets out of the jam, and he keeps the score one to nothing. We are heading to the bottom of the second inning, and uh, Team Mexico is coming to the plate. This is your 2022 Colt World Series. It's live from Rit One Park in Marion, Illinois. Aiden McManaway back to the mound for Team Marion. And it is going to be the six, seven, and eight hitters for Monterey Nuevo Leon, Mexico. Daniel Garza at the plate. Defensively behind McManaway. Sievers in left, Bergen in center, Fricker in right. Raditz, Harlan, Hari, and Griffith. On the infield, third to first. Jack Ford does the catching behind the plate. And Daniel Garza at the plate for Mexico as he takes strike two. Two balls, two, excuse me, two and one. Two and one is the count. Two balls and one strike. As McManaway comes to the plate with the pitch. And fouled just to our right. Here in Little League or Pony League Baseball at this tournament. Ooh. Misses outside. Jack Ford thought that was a strike. He was going to throw down to third to Raditz. 
Chad Ozy doesn't agree, calls it a ball, and it's full now. Here's the pitch for McManaway. That's on the ground toward second. Hari slides, scoops, throws, gets him. What a play. What a play. Jack Hari moves to his right, slides and gloves, and throws all in one motion in the first out here in the bottom of the second. 4-3 on the put out. Outstanding play. It's going to bring up Patricio Torres. Torres will bat from the right side, second baseman. Where's lucky number 13 on his back? Bunts, that one foul, and it was about two and a half feet above his head. He had to reach up in order to bunt that. That'll draw the corners in. We'll see if uh, Dawson Griffith comes in at first. He plays deep behind the bag at first. But Raditz is even and charging from third. Here comes Griffith. He's charging as well. The pitch is thrown to the backstop from McManaway. Just a bit outside. Watch the movie. You'll catch the meaning of that. One ball, one strike. Strike, one and two. Daniel Garza swings and misses, strikes, strikes out. That is out number two here in the second inning as he went down swinging. Aiden Cordoba will come to the plate for Monterey, Nuevo Leon, Mexico. I just can't get that to flow. I'll keep working on it. Two down, though, and the first pitch a called strike from McManaway. 67 on the radar gun. It's posted out in right center field just below the video board here. Swing and a miss. 0-2. Aiden Cordoba. Looking at the 0-2 pitch. Misses not much. Everybody thought it was strike three <laughs> for Marion. Harlan took off for the dugout. Hari took off for the dugout, as did Fricker. That outside corner not there yet. That's a little bit low. Two and two. We'll see if there's any adjustment on the strike zone as we go along in this game. As of yet, there is not. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch from McManaway. Popped up toward right. Fricker calls for it. Right center field makes the catch for the third out. Three up, three down. And Marion is coming to bat in the top of the third inning. One nothing. Mexico leads Marion here at the Colt World Series.
top of the third inning. Marion has one hit, committed one error, but they've yet to score. Mexico has one run on two hits and no errors. Marion coming to the plate here. And it's shortstop Cruz Harlan. And the first pitch from Humberto Cruz stays outside for ball one. Harlan stands right on top of the plate. And Cruz has missed outside on two consecutive pitches. Misses outside again, three and O. Oh. Last inning, Marion had the bases loaded with two outs. And Brandon Bergen struck out with the bases loaded. There's the called strike on the outside corner, 83 mile an hour pitch from Humberto Cruz. Daniel Garza in left behind him defensively, Caleb Conde in center. Andres Gar Garza in right. Here's the 3 1. Pop foul out of play on the infield. Gerardo Martinez at third. Alessandro Falcone at center, or excuse me, at short. Patricio Torres at second. Remigio Quintanilla at first. Aiden Cardonia at the plate doing the catching. And Humberto Cruz working his third inning. On the mound, fouled off again by Cruz Harlan. Cruz is from Centralia. Attends Centralia High School. A Centralia orphan. Popped it up. High pop fly towards center. Who's going to take it? Center fielder coming in is Condi. He calls for it, makes the catch for the first out. And now Camden Rannitz will come to the plate. Camden struck out looking his first time up. Bats here in the third with nobody on. Called strike from Humberto Cruz. Outfield is straight away. Little to no breeze here at rent one, and he hops that one in the dirt outside. Evens a count one and one. Fantastic crowd here for Sunday night baseball at rent one park in Marion, Illinois. That's pop foul. It's going to hit on top of us. On the roof here at rent one, it'll come back to the crowd as the roof here slopes toward the stadium. And if you're sitting in the seats there, you need to watch your noggin. Misses outside. And if you do get a foul ball during the Colt World Series, you take it and turn it in. It's not Major League Baseball with a, an apparent never-ending supply of baseballs. Here they will give you a token for a Culver's treat. Culver's. Sounds awesome as he fouls another one into the parking lot. And you'll watch the kids now. They all run toward the gate to the parking lot to go track down that baseball. Count staying at two and two with one down. Nobody on for Marion here in the top of the third inning. This is game 13 of the Colt World Series. The pitch from Cruz, uh, foul tipped right off the end of the bat. Two balls, two strikes. Humberto Cruz now, here he comes home. Misses outside, it's full. On deck, Caleb Sievers.
Full count, the pitch. Line toward the gap in right center field. That's gonna get down, base hit for Raditz as he rounds first. And they get the ball in quickly, so a single for Caleb Raditz. And Caleb, I said Caleb Raditz, it's Cam, Camden Raditz, and now Caleb Sievers comes to the plate. Sievers, he struck out looking his first time up. Back in the first lines, this one into right center field, base hit. Rounding second, oh, he pulls up at second is Raditz. And with one down, Marion's got something cooking here. Runners at first and second. As the base hit from Sievers keeps it rolling and Drake Moss. Drake struck out in the second, but it was a wild pitch. And Aiden Cardonia, the catcher, could not gun him down at first. And he reached on the strikeout, which is rare, but it happens. The first pitch from Cruz is called strike. Marion, runner in scoring position in Raditz. Sievers, the runner at first. The pitch from Humberto Cruz, curveball inside corner, called strike two. Outfield, straight away. Garza, Conde, Garza. Daniel Garza in left, Andres in right. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Outside, hop that one in the box. One and two now. This Marion team won their opening game of the tournament when they beat Greensboro, North Carolina, nine to one. Mexico won their opener over Germany, five to four. And that was a very, very good ball game. It's a tight one here, one nothing. Mexico the lead. This ball's lifted in the air in right toward foul territory. Quintanilla makes the catch for out number two. Ask for time. Is also meeting out there with him was Patricio Torres and Andres Garza. The ball was in foul territory. Moss flies out. And with two down, Morgan Fricker will come to the plate. Morgan struck out his first time. That was back in the second inning. Two on, two out. The pitch from Humberto Cruz. Just misses. One ball, no strikes. Curve ball off the end of the bat, just queued out there toward first base coach. They call a balk. So the pitch won't count. It was a balk as Cruz did not come set. As he's working from the stretch. So the count. Now one ball, no strikes. Runners in scoring position out at second and third. Hops that one. Just short of home plate. Two and one. Excuse me, two and oh. With two down. Boy, base hit here would score two. More than likely and give Marion a 2 nothing lead. It would at least score one and tie it up. Here's the pitch. Fouled off again. Two and one. Two and one is the count. With two down. Berto Cruz, his pitch is fouled the other way now toward third base. Games today started at 11 o'clock. Southern Illinois advanced in the bracket. They beat Japan and eliminated Japan from the tournament. 14 to 8. 
Team Mexico is the only international team remaining. Germany's gone, Japan's gone. Of course, Dominican Republic had to forfeit their games. The 2-2 pitch hit towards center. Caleb Conde makes the catch, ends the threat, and Marion cannot score. As the LED lights here, they can do all sorts of stuff with it. Kind of startled the fans. They thought it was a power outage. There's three outs here, though, in the third. We're heading to the top of the fourth. Here at Rent One Park. Bottom of the third inning here at Rent One Park, Team Mexico. Monterey, Nuevo Leon, Mexico comes to bat. They have a one nothing lead. No runs on three hits, one error for Marion. One run on two hits for Mexico. And the first pitch is high. Aiden McMahon away. Throws inside, misses. It's 2-0 and now. 2-0 and is the count. Two balls and no strikes. Right down the middle, strike one from McManaway. He's working his third inning here against the Mexico zone champion, Bunt. Jumping out, Jack Ford's fires. What a, wow. The bunt from Caleb Cordova. And Jack Ford jumped out and fired the ball toward first. And to be truthful, I thought he got him by a half a step. It was a rocket of a throw. And Coach Hari comes out to question that, returns to the dugout. So a single for Caleb Cordova. Top of the order now for Mexico in Andres Garza. And that's the second hit of the game for Mexico. The pitch inside for McManaway. The count now 1 0 to Andres Garza. He singled back to start the game for Mexico in the bottom of the first. Bats here in the third with the runner at first. McManaway checks, throws to first to check the runner there. That's Condi. Condi gets his lead, the pitch, way inside. Garza spun away from that inside pitch. Two balls, no strikes, no outs. Misses outside 3-0 now.
Manaway works from the stretch. Throws that one right down the middle. Gets the strike call, three and one. There are not many times in this Pony League and Colt World Series where you see somebody swinging three and oh. And he bunts that one foul and it's full now. They truly believe a walk is the same thing as a hit here, especially three and O. Oh. So it's full, three and two, the runner at first in Condi. Swing and a miss. Foul tipped it, actually, at the plate. And so Cordova will return to first base. Called start third strike. Gets the strikeout of Andres Garza. And that is the first out here in the third inning. And Umberto Cruz, who reached on the fielder's choice in the first, bats from the right side here in the third. The winner of this game as I break out the handy dandy bracket takes the pitch in or a called strike. The winner of this game will play tomorrow night at eight o'clock. And they will play the winner of the two o'clock game being held tomorrow afternoon. That's the loser of this game who will face Greensboro, North Carolina. Whoever wins that game will come back and play Mexico tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Four games on tap for Monday of this Colt World Series starting at 11 o'clock. Balls hit towards second. Hari to second for one, on to first in time, turns the double play. Four, six, three, and that ends the inning. Mexico still leads at one nothing. Marion's coming to the plate. Top of the fourth is on the way. Next, here at the Colt World Series at Rit One Park. Welcome back to Rent One Park. It's Dave McKenzie as we are in the top of the fourth inning. Tight ball game, one nothing. Mexico, they scored that run back in the first inning. Each team with three hits. Marion has committed just one error. That's the only error of the game. And Marion batting here in the top of the fourth. It's going to be the seven, eight, and nine hitters. Jack Hari's going to lead things off. Dawson Griffith on deck and Jack Ford 
is in the hole. If anybody gets on top of the order. And Berto Cruz continues to throw for Mexico. That pitch called strike, 81 mile an hour fastball from Cruz. Setting the defense behind him, uh, Daniel Garza in left, Caleb Condi in center, Andres Garza in right. This ball's fouled back. On the infield, Gerardo Martinez, Alejandro Falcón, Patricio Torres, and Remigio Quintanilla. Third to first, Aiden Cardonia doing the catching. Jack Hari at the plate, steps out. Everybody set. Here's the pitch from Cruz. Curveball swing and a strikeout of Jack Hari. Out number one is going to bring up Dawson Griffith. Dawson reached on a walk in the second, was stranded. That's when Marion had the bases loaded with two outs. Called strike one from Humberto Cruz. 86 on the gun with that pitch. Outfield is straight away. Second baseman, Patricio Torres, playing like a rover in right center field. You know, in softball, when you have 10 fielders and you have the one you can move, Left and right, wherever you want them. This ball's hit foul. It's going to go out of the stadium to our right. But that's what Patricio Torres is playing. He's in short right center field. One ball, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Humberto Cruz, the pitch, way outside, two and two. This crowd is stuck around as we are just after 9.30 Central Time here in Marion in Williamson County, Southern Illinois. Ground ball towards second. Cruz or Torres, long throw from that position. Had him played perfectly. 4-3 on the putout for out number two. And now the number nine hitter in Jack Ford will come to the plate. Jack. His first time up. Walked. And he bats here for the second time with nobody on, two outs. Swings late on the pitch from Cruz. Anticipation coming into this game, it was going to be a good ball game. And I think there was thought it could be a close ball game. And it stayed that way as Mexico scored in the top of the first inning, or excuse, bottom of the first. And that's where we have stayed. Each team with three hits. Each team has had opportunities to score more. Mentioned in the second, Marion had the bases loaded with two outs. But Humberto Cruz got a big strikeout to end the inning. Foul tip at the plate. Strike two, one ball, two strikes. And this game could very well come down to a play in the sixth or seventh inning. Here is the one-two pitch. Fouled into the netting. As a matter of fact, let me talk about one of the earlier games. As it was... Aroma Park in Greensboro. Going into the seventh inning, Greensboro had a 5-1 lead. We'll continue after this pitch from Humberto Cruz. The 1-2 two with two outs. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Three up, three down. Two strikeouts from Humberto Cruz this half inning. 
and it'll be the top of the order next time Marion comes around to bat. But Mexico's on their way here in the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be the three, four, and five hitters on the way. Mexico leads Marion one nothing. My story coming up in the next half inning. It's the Colt Little League World Series from Rent One Park. Bottom of the fourth inning here at Rent One Park. Team Mexico with the 1-0 lead, and they bat. They're the home team here in this contest here this evening. One run on three hits for Mexico. Marion, no runs on those three hits. Marion's completed the, has, uh, the only error in the game. And the pitch from Aiden McManaway over the top of the head of the catcher, Remigio Consanilla. Quintanilla, rather. I was telling the story about anything can happen, and you talk about comebacks. And that occurred in a game this afternoon between Greensboro and Aroma Park. Greensboro had a 5-1 lead heading to the bottom of the seventh inning. Aroma Park flew out for the first out, struck out for the second I'm sorry. They started with the top of the order. The first three players in the seventh inning scored, making it a 5-4 game. They had runners at first and third with one out. The batter at the plate struck out. The runner that was... On first, with runners on the corners, one took off on the steal. So the catcher for Greensboro trying to throw him out at second, a strike him out, throw him out, and they called catcher inter or runner batter interference on the throw as Quintanilla strikes out here, looking. And Aroma Park had battled their way back to within one. And the game ends on a strikeout and a batter's interference. And as a matter of fact, that loss sent Aroma Park home from the tournament. Their second loss, double elimination. Quite a game. is exciting. A lot of drama in that. Not a lot of drama so far. Just a tight ball game here. one nothing. Mexico leads. One down, and shortstop Alessandro Falcon is at the plate. One ball, no strikes, one down, nobody on. Outfielders are kind of bunched up in the middle. Falcon, who has a fantastic bat. Could pull it up the left field line or punch it toward the right field line. Two balls, one strike. 
On deck is Martinez. He pushes that one foul to the right. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch from McManaway called third strike. Back to back. Case looking for McManaway. And now Gerardo Martinez. Gerardo digs in on the left side, his first time up. He popped out towards center, one of the few fly balls that we've seen in this game. As a matter of fact, I'm looking through my score sheet and I've only seen one fly ball put out for Marion. And that was Gerardo Martinez back in the first inning. Count one ball, two strikes with two outs here. In the bottom of the fourth inning. Marion, when they come to bat, the top of the inning will have the top of the order. Here's the one two. Misses outside. McManaway has five strikeouts. This ball striped into center field. Diving catch. Hit the ground. They're going to say the catch was not made by Bergen as he kind of slid toward right center field and appears that he may have short hopped it. The umpire right out there and a base hit for Gerardo Martinez. And now Daniel Garza comes to the plate. Garza grounded out to second to lead off the bottom of the second for Mexico. Touch of a breeze here at Rent One Park. McManaway taking his time. This one's hit towards short. Harlan boots it. Hits off his glove. It stays on the infield as Hari was there to clean it up. And so now that'll be E6. On Cruz Harlan. And Mexico has two on now with two out. Patricio Torres will come to the plate. Torres wears number 13 and... He struck out swinging back in the second inning, but he's got runners on in front of him now. Martinez, Garza. That's hit toward left, and it's going to drop for a base hit. Here comes the runner from second. That's Martinez, the throw offline. Martinez gives Mexico the 2-0 lead on the RBI single from Patricio Torres. Lined that one in the left field. As the fans here chant Mexico. Torres stopped at second. And coming to the plate is Aiden Cordova. He hits from the right side. Aiden popped out toward right. There's the I knew there was one more, and he flies this one foul down the right field line. I knew there was at least two putouts on the fly ball. Two of them so far. Aiden McManaway has done a good job keeping the ball on the ground. He's got five strikeouts in the game. Spin move, trying to throw it to check the runner at second. He gets away, throws it to center. That's going to move everybody up. Coming from first is Torres as Garza winds up at third. 
And that'll be an error on McManaway. And that's the third error. Two committed here in this fourth inning. Three total, and they're all on Marion. And Coach Hari wants to get players to the bullpen to start warming up. And he wants to talk to his pitcher, Aiden McManaway. 2-0 the score. Stay with us. All right, Coach Hari returns to the dugout. McManaway climbs back up on the bump. He's ready to go. Aiden Cardoba is the batter. Runners at second and third. Timeout called. Gerardo Martinez just scored to give Mexico the 2-0 lead. And then the throwing area error is what put the runners at second and third. And now... Cardova heads to first. As he was hit by the pitch. And now, Caleb Cordova comes to the plate. Number nine hitter, he singled. That was in the third inning. But he was stranded after Humberto Cruz hit into the 4-6-3 double play. That ball out of play to the right. Two runs on five hits now for Mexico. But the key thing in this inning is the two errors on Marion. The 0-1 lifted foul to the right. First error in the inning on Cruz Harlan as he couldn't handle the chopper as he charged in, hit off his glove. And then the throwing error from Aiden McManaway on the pickoff move to second. Here's the pitch. And the dirt gets away. Jack Ford's there to clean it up. Keeps the runners at bay. Daniel Garz the runner at third. Patricio Torres the runner at second. And at first, Aiden Cardo Cardoba, bases loaded. One, two. Misses down and in. Two and two now. McMahon away, looks away, looks in. Here's the pitch. Pulled. Foul hard. He was way out in front of that pitch. Jack Ford, the catcher, wants to go talk to Aiden McManaway. Has a little chat. Everybody resets. Bases are loaded. Two balls, two strikes, two out. The pitch. Lifted, foul, and out of play. And a fan down there tried to barehand it, hit off his hands, but he got the assist from another buddy that was right there. Kept the ball from hitting the concrete. And then he handed the ball to the one that muffed the catch. And he's going to go get the token for ice cream. He should have to split that. Two balls, two strikes. <laughs> Called third strike from McManaway. Gets Caleb Cordova looking. Mexico scores one here in the fourth inning. And that extends their lead to 2 nothing. 
Marion is going to come to the plate to bat in the top of the fifth inning. Hope you're enjoying this ball game. It's a good one. 2 nothing Mexico over Marion here at your 2022 Colt World Series. It's live from Rent One Park in Marion, Illinois. We're heading to the top of the fifth inning here at Rit One Park. Marion comes to the plate. It's going to be the top of the order. Brendan Bergen, Cruz Harlan, and then Camden Raditz. If anybody gets on, it'll be cleanup hitter Caleb Sievers. Marion has three hits, has yet to score in this game. They've committed three errors. Mexico has those two runs on those five hits. And a strike to Brendan Bergen. Puts the count at 0 and 2. As Humberto Cruz continues to throw, and that one is in the dirt and off the plate. One ball, two strikes. We hope you come out and join us tomorrow here at Rent One Park. There will be four games starting at 11 o'clock. Curveball hammered toward left. Going back on it is Garza over his head. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Top of the order is Bergen. Round second, and he's on his way to third. Here's the throw, not in time. Just triple for the leadoff hitter, Brendan Bergen. And Marion has something cooking here in the top of the fifth inning. Bergen turned on that pitch up in the zone and hammered it over the head of Daniel Garza, who had gave chase. And now it's going to be Cruz Harlan. I think Daniel Garza didn't realize that ball was going to carry like that. It's not like he turned and ran as hard as he could. He was sidestepping, thinking he was going to get back to it. But it just kept going and kept going, and it winds up rolling all the way to the fence. Stand-up triple to start the fifth for Marion from Bergen. Here's Cruz Harlan, and he looks at a pitch outside, evens the count one and one. Struck out back in the first, popped out to center in the third, bats here in the fifth. Berto Cruz, the right-hander, deals. That catches the outside corner, 84 on the fastball. Infield is playing in. They don't want to allow any runs. Here's the pitch off the plate. 
two and two now. Here's another one. This is driven toward right over the head of the right fielder. Andres Garza, one run is going to score. Rounding second. And on his way to third, Cruz Harlan dives head first. Back to back triples for Team Marion. And they have sliced this lead by Mexico in half. It is two to one. That ball was driven just like the first one from Bergen over the head of Andres Garza in right field. And again, as I look at the replay, it just kept carrying. And Cruz Harlan just kept on a chugging all the way around, head first dive into third, and that is going to be it for Humberto Cruz as... The signal has been made to the bullpen for a replacement. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll let you know who is the relief pitcher, and we'll give you the stats on Humberto Cruz coming up in moments. New pitcher is Kevin Urbina. He replaces Humberto Cruz. Cruz won an outing through four innings, allowed five hits, walked two. He struck out nine in this game, but he gave up one run, and it was an earned run, and that's what cut this lead in half for Marion, and now it's going to be Kevin Urbina. He's on the mound for Team Mexico. The first pitch is in for a strike. It's been a good ball game. 2-1 right now with one out, runner at third. And that is Cruz Harlan, Camden Raditz at the plate. Raditz looks out at Urbina. Outfield straight away. They're in it on the infield. Again, they don't want the tying run to score. So if there's a grounder on the infield, they're going to come home as Urbina can't find the zone there. It's one and two. One out. Raddit steps out. Urbina looks in at his catcher, Cardona. Cardonia. Outside corner, got him looking strike three. 
out number two. Or that's the first out, I'm sorry. On Raditz and now the cleanup hitter, Caleb Siebers. Urbina's pitch just a touch low to Siebers. Siebers struck out in the first. He singled and was stranded back in the third. Bats here in the fifth inning in a 2-1 ball game. The runner at third, the 1-0. Misses outside again, 2-0. Siebers. Playing in left field, where's number 26, right up on top of the plate. Two balls, no strikes. That one just a touch high. It's 3-0 and oh now. And Kevin Urbina needs to throw a strike. I would highly doubt that Siebers is swinging 3-0. And he doesn't, and he gets the walk. And now it's going to be Drake Moss. Drake struck out, reached on the pass ball. That was back in the second inning. And he popped out to first in foul territory in the third inning. And he bats here now. There's two on. Harlan, the runner at third. Siebers, the runner at first. One down. Kevin Urbina on the mound for Mexico in a 2-1 game. This is an exciting game. Glad to have you watching. Urbina comes set, the pitch. Off speed, outside corner, strike one. 65. On the off speed pitch. Urbina has that right foot on the first base side of the rubber as he pitches from the stretch. This one just misses low. And now it's one and, and one. I said earlier we'd run through the schedule for tomorrow. The 11 o'clock game is going to feature Hallingen, Texas against Southern Illinois. That kicks off at 11. Then the 2 o'clock game will be the loser of this one. Base hit up the middle for Marion. Tie ball game. We're tied at two. As Drake Moss comes through with the RBI single to score Harlan from third. Siebers advances to second. And it's a tie ball game. And now it will be Morgan Fricker, the right fielder. He struck out and popped out. He fouls that one straight back at us. So the 11 o'clock game tomorrow will feature Hallingen, Texas, and Southern Illinois. Both of those teams are one and one. The two o'clock game will be the loser of this game against Greensboro. The winner will play tomorrow night at eight o'clock. And then they will play the winner of Greensboro and the loser of this game. So it could be either Marion or Mexico playing Greensboro. The winner will advance on to the 8 o'clock game to play the winner of this one. Does that make sense? You can go to ColtWorldSeries.org if you would like more information. You can look at the bracket or you can head to Pony.org and that will get you there as well two balls one strike one out tie ball game two two change up fouled off at the plate by fricker been a great game so far danny bonnier joins me here in the booth and you've been out there roaming around this atmosphere is Fantastic. I love the energy that we're seeing around here. And, you know, Team Mexico's fans, like we said, they travel well, and they are among the loudest crowds here Always. at this Colt World Series. Always. They know how to rev them up. 
But it's been a good ball game as Urbina misses. And we've got a full count now to Fricker. Runners at first and second for Marion. Looking to take the lead here in the top of the fifth. Full count, one out, the pitch. Missed, walked him. It's going to load the bases. And Jack Harry is going to come to the plate. Tough well, opportunity to be a hero here. Toughest inning for Mexico in this tournament, opening with those back-to-back -back triples. Still a tie ball game, but man, Marion's got a lot of chances to get into, get above into the lead. Absolutely. And there's only one out here. Urbina, who came in to relieve Humberto Cruz, who had nine strikeouts, needs some help here. Infield continues to play in. They're wanting to chop down the runner at home if it's on the ground. Outfield is shallow. And we've seen the ability for Marion to hit it over their head. Jack Harry, the second baseman, has struck out twice. His redemption in the cards for him. One ball, one strike, one out. On the outside corner, Urbina gets strike two. And you know, Mexico was probably the freshest team heading into the Sunday. They played Friday. They got that bye on Saturday. You would have to think. Called third strike. Boy on the outside corner. And that is a big out as Jack Harry was just looking, just shopping, two down. And it's going to bring up the number hitter in Dawson Griffith. Yeah, really nice pitch there to get the batter. And now a way to escape this jam without allowing any more runs. Dawson Griffith can put a charge in it, though. Outfield backs up to him for him. Infield backs up as well with two down. They just need a force at any base. And that would be huge if Kevin Urbina could get out of this jam. Bases loaded with one out and only allowing the two runs. The pitch is high from Urbina. 2-0 and oh now. Here's the 2-0. Outside corner, 74 mile an hour pitch from Kevin Urbina. You can hear the fans from Mexico. They've got a lot of chance. They do. 2-1 and 2. Here's the pitch line, base hit. No, is it fielded at second. Nice job by Patricio Torres. He was playing deep, way deep. Played it on the hop, and that ends the inning as he gets the force out of Griffith. It goes 4-3 on the put out. But Marion has tied this game at two. And Mexico coming to the plate in the bottom of the fifth, trying to regain the lead. This is your 2022 Colt World Series. It's live here on YouTube from Ritwin Park in Marion.
Bottom of the fifth inning here in a 2-2 ball game. Game number 13 of this Colt World Series. It's going to be the top of the order for Mexico. It'll be Andres Garza and Berto Cruz and then Remigio Quintanilla. Those are the scheduled hitters. And if anybody gets on, Al Alessandro Falcon will hit. The home run derby champion from Friday morning. As we have players that are coming back from the bullpen, those that are going to the bullpen, and just a little delay here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Two runs on six hits for Marion. This ball's driven in the air toward left. Siebers, we're going back on it, gets turned around, dives, makes the catch. What an outstanding adjustment by Caleb Siebers in left as that ball was drilled out there and he got turned around on it. But he dives and makes the catch over the shoulder. That's a long out F7 for out number one. And you know, if he misses that ball, that's another triple probably that yep. we'll see because we've seen a lot of those triples go out into the deep part of the park over and left. But wow, what a play by Caleb Siebers. It's hard to adjust moving all around like that, especially when you start it shallow, and yeah. then that ball just kind of takes you off guard. But just perfect adjustment by Caleb Siebers. What a play. Got turned around a couple of times, made the adjustment, still made the catch. Humberto Cruz, who was a starting pitcher, and he hits in the two hole. He bats here in the fifth inning. I was telling some folks down at the uh, down in the stands, Dave, we've seen some phenomenal defense in this Colt World Series. Yes, we have. Pitch misses outside. Cruz, from an offensive standpoint today, he scored the first run for Mexico back in the first. Reached on a fielder's choice and then scored. Takes that one inside and barely got out of the way. Three and one now. He was part of a 4-6-3 double play in the third. And he bats here and picks up the walk in the fifth. And this team from Monterrey, Mexico, Liga Mandarina. It's the first time a team from Monterrey, Mexico has made it to the Colt World Series since 1961. It was when the series was in Abilene, Texas. Wow. It was in Abilene, Texas, and then it went to Lafayette, Indiana. Before that, it went to Shawnee, Oklahoma for a few years. Then it went to Lafayette, Indiana. There you go. And then there for was 40 years. And then there was one year. Well, there was one year in between those, that long gap where they played in Tampa in 1972. So from 69 to 2016, pretty much every year the Colt World Series is in Lafayette, except for that one year in Tampa. Long fly ball, man. This is a high fly ball to right. Fricker camp center. It makes the catch. A lot of elevation. Not a lot of windage there. And we have two down. Yeah, that was a towering fly ball. <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing a lot of balls hit high in the air today. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of a kind of opposite of the the, the previous game that we had. Uh, what was it, the uh, Harlingen and Covina, where it, it seemed like uh, fly balls were hard to come by. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe the air's a little bit thinner here tonight. Well, they, I did learn from our weather group that when, you know, with uh, more humid air, the ball tends to travel further in humid air rather than dry air. Rather than dry, yeah. That's why Colorado Rockies have a humidor over in Coors Field. Two balls and no strikes to Alessandro Falcon. The last time a team from Mexico won it all was in 2016, Tijuana, Baja, Mexico. They won it all in 2016 when they played in Lafayette, Indiana. The year before they came to Marion, I do believe. Uh, let's or see. maybe two years. Two years. Stolen base. From uh, Umberto Cruz as he slides in. The throw was there, but he had a great jump. Yeah, the Colt World Series made its first appearance in Marion in 2018. That was the year that Levittown, Puerto Rico won the tournament. Yes, it is. The year before, it was the uh, last year it was held in Lafayette, Indiana. It was when the Netherlands won that one. Two and balls I and one strike with two outs. Here's the pitch in the dirt, gets away. Cruz is heading toward third. He'll stand, get in there standing up. 
And now just 90 feet away. Falcone has singled, struck out looking. Mexico has ran well on the base paths. They have. They've, uh, they've been, and they've got some good coaches on the first and third base sides. They, they've got a close eye on every pitch, everywhere the ball goes. I tell you what, this crowd has stuck around as we're pushing on 20 minutes after 10 o'clock. That ball's lifted down the line in right. It's going to drop for a base hit. The run will score from third, rounding first, but deciding not to go. An RBI single from Alessandro Falcone. The home run king didn't need a home run this time. He had a small hit, and it was enough to bring the go-ahead run. Falcone going the other way with the pitch. It, was, it found the outer third. Nice adjustment from Falcone, and he just gives Mexico the 3-2 to two lead. Little bloop. RBI single to right, and now Mexico has regained the lead. It's 3-2, and at the plate it is Gerardo Martinez, the third baseman. Martinez has flown out to center, and he has singled and scored. Scored the second run for the Mexico zone champion. The pitch from Mac McManaway to second, played there. Well done. Oh, he called him safe. He called Falcone safe down there. The ball clearly wow. beat Falcone, and Falcone found a way to slide in there. and Somehow, some way, and Hari took the... I don't know how he missed him, but uh, the safe, and yeah, the that's what uh, Coach Hari wants to hear. Yeah, there's a, and then unlike Major League Baseball, you can't challenge here in the Colt World Series. There's no rule for that, and I just don't know if there's a technology for that here in the Colt World Series. But still, Falcone able to sneak under the tag. Looks like uh, second baseman for Southern Illinois was in front of him and had to swing back to make the tag. Falcone found the outer rim of the base to sneak in. And so there's going to be time called. Timeout is called. So I'm looking here. Was the fielder's choice. Now Daniel Garza is at the plate. And that's a good point. Ball strike or taken for a strike. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, you want to give the guy at first the single, but the fielder opted to try and get the force out at second and was yep. unable to. And that's so that kind of it's kind of unfair. It robs the man at first of a hit, but Still, you still have base runners for Mexico. Exactly, with two out. Falcone at second. Martinez, the runner at first. This ball's hit in the air to right. Maybe playable as Griffith makes the catch for the third out. F3 on the put out. And Mexico regains the lead 3-2, to two, and Marion is going to... Come to the plate here. Top of the sixth inning is next. Here from Rit One Park.
Top of the sixth inning, Marion is coming to the plate. It'll be the number nine, number one, and number two hitters. Jack Ford to lead things off. Brandon Bergen and then Cruz Harlan. Marion scored their only two runs of the game back in the fifth inning, the last inning, to tie it up 2-2. Two -two. Mexico scored in the first. They scored one in the fourth, scored one in the fifth, has regained the lead 3-2. to two. That's where we stand right now, and it's Jack Ford, the catcher. Jack has walked. He struck out. Bats for the third time here in the top of the sixth inning. Quite possibly the best game we've seen here at the Colt World Series just to see how tight it is in a 3-2 lead for Mexico. Well, I tell you what, it doesn't look like any of the fans have left. Ball's driven foul, and it's going to go down on the berm on the left side for just a long strike. Even to count one and one, I'm looking at the fans, and they've hung right in there. Of course, it's been a fantastic game, but there's been prizes that are going to be Giving away. Yeah, I got to give away some coupons for large pizza. I got to Which play the, sounds really good. You know, and I also played the prices right, so that was nice. That's a one that's one thing off my bucket list. Be a prices right yeah. host, even if it's at a ballpark. Yeah, it's a fun game to play. Two balls, one strike, called strike two. Drew Carey or Bob Barker? Um I was more like the Drew Carey host when okay. I did that. Two balls, two strikes. I did the on-field hosting for several years, so. Ground ball left side. Fielded by Martinez, and the throw gets Ford at first for the first out here in the sixth inning. One down, top of the order now, Brendan Bergen. Bergen is singled, he's struck out, and he's tripled. Back in the fifth, Marion had back-to-back -back triples. How often do you see that not, in any game? Not very often at all. And the bigs are really anywhere where you play baseball. Back-to-back -back triples is an anomaly. And the first pitch to Brendan Bergen is a strike. And that first triple from Marion went to the warning track and left. That was a deep shot. It was a shot. Kevin Urbina has done a nice job in relief of Humberto Cruz. Cruz struck out nine in his four innings of work. He, Urbina's come in and throwing his second inning. This is a swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. And Cruz had an amazing game in game one Friday in, against he Germany. He didn't want to let go of the ball. No, he didn't. The one-two from Urbina, swing and a miss, struck him out. That heat at 80 miles an hour, and that's the thing about these Mexico pitchers. They've got guys that can throw it up there, mid-80s, low-80s, and then they can come back with the breaking ball in the, in the low to mid-60s. We saw Humberto Cruz throwing 86-87, and Urbina can get it up there, 80-81. I think he's touched 82 one time. And now, Cruz Harlan, who tripled his last time up, steps in. He pounds this one into the turf, and it's going to say they're going to say it's foul. It looks like off they, his foot, either off the foot or yeah, it looks like off the foot is what the umpire signaled. Cruz sporting the stirrups with the shin guard on the right leg, the blue helmet. You know, I've never, I haven't been to Rent One Park at night in quite a while and really beautiful sight the field just pops it does at, well these are night. new lights these are that's led what, lights that's what someone told me you can control them on an ipad yeah absolutely and you can have different colors and actually when you were getting ready to start the prices wide <laughs> and the, they did the uh where they like the flashing the, lights the flashing lights and i myself like everybody else that's been to rent one park in the Past was like row, row, lights, power just went out. Yeah, I was just about. It to was say. an effect. I was about to say, like, uh, <laughs> what transformer did we forget to pay for? No balls, two strikes, swing, and a miss struck him out. Had him all tied up. He didn't know what he was swinging at, and Marion goes down one, two, three in the top of the sixth inning. Team Mexico. It'll be 
The seven, eight, and nine batters, they're coming to the plate here in the bottom of the six. It's a 3-2 Mexico lead over Marion here at the Colt World Series. New pitcher for Marion as Mexico comes to the bat, comes to the plate here in the bottom of the sixth. It's going to be Noah Arnold replacing Aiden McManaway and what a job that McManaway did. The numbers on him, he threw five innings, allowed six hits, walked one, struck out six, only allowed three runs, one earned run. Outstanding starting pitching for Marion tonight. And on the other side, you get Humberto Cruz. It was fantastic. And yeah, both very efficient tonight. Absolutely. It's really who's going to get the bigger hit, who's going to square it up a little bit more. And right now, the edge is on Mexico. Patricio Torres at the plate. Looks at one away. Or excuse me, takes a called strike. One and two. Torres. Cordoba and Cordoba on the way is that one is pushed out of play to the right. Two runs on six hits for Marion, three errors also committed. And then Mexico has their three runs on six hits. They've yet to commit an error. This ball's lifted foul again, 80 mile an hour pitch from Noah Arnold. as Patricio Torres takes a stroll around the home plate area, adjusting the protection on his left arm. One ball, two strikes, a little bit low, evens it up at two and two. And you know, we could see this matchup again tomorrow night. So the loser of this game will play Greensboro in the two o'clock game, and then the winner of that will play Mexico. So Marion Mexico could meet once again in an 8 o'clock matchup. If Mexico were to hold on. Yes. It could be reversed. It's close. It can go either way at this point. Top of the sixth inning. This ball is hit toward right. Fricker backs up about three paces. Puts the glove over his left shoulder and makes the catch for out number one. This game is so close it could go either way. Yeah. My gosh. Just a couple of bloops, well placed, and you know, we gonna get another tie. And I talked earlier about the Aroma Park game here. They had come back from 5-1, got it to 5-4, and I thought was gonna tie it up, but it was a batter interference after a strikeout that ended the game and heartbreak for Aroma Park and Unfortunately, that was their second loss, and they're done with this tournament. A swing and a miss on a 
near 80 mile an hour pitch. Yeah, we, we've, been, we've been seeing a lot of great resolve from teams. Germany twice. They were down five to they were down eight to one at one point, clawed back to eight to six. They did. And then in the game against Mexico, actually, they were down five to one heading into the seventh, and they scratched across three. But Made Mexico was able Mexico was able to hang on five four. Three twos the score here. Mexico the one run lead in the top of the sixth inning at the plate for Mexico. It is Aiden Cordova. It's from the right side. It's this one toward right. Frick is there. Fricker is there. Back to back putouts in right field by Morgan Fricker. We do have one game set for tomorrow. 11 a.m. start, Texas and Southern Illinois. The rest of the bracket is dependent on this game. Noah Arnold is facing his third batter in Caleb Cordova. <coughs> no balls, one strike, two down. Top of the sixth. One hopper toward third. Raditz, gloves, throws in time. Three up, three down five three on the put out. Well, it's gonna come down to the seventh inning like it does frequently. Marion's last opportunity is coming up as they trail by one three to two. If Mexico holds, they win in advance. This is your 2022 Colt World Series. To the seventh we go, Marion, their last opportunity. And it's going to be the three, four, and five hitters. Camden Raditz to get things started here in the seventh. Struck out, singled, and struck out. Bats here as he's going to face Kevin Urbina. Urbina trying to close this out for Mexico in the off-speed pitch. From Urbina, swinging a mitts from Raditz. Teacher Appreciation Night here at Rent One Park, celebrating our area educators. Urbina looks in at his catcher. Cardona, the pitch. Trying to get the inside breaking ball, but it missed 63 miles an hour from one, Urbina. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Outfield playing deep. Cutting off the alleys, ground ball towards short. Falcone, gloves, throws in time, gets him by a step. One down. Caleb Sievers will come to the plate. Sievers in the contest. Struck out, singled, str or excuse me, struck out, singled, and walked. 
Hits here with one down. Urbina just pumping, pumping gas right now. Yeah, just, 79 on the clock. Yeah, just about touched 80. Not wasting any time, throw strikes. That one in for a strike one. One ball, one strike, one down. Let your D do its job. Don't get fancy. Don't try to paint. Throws that one off the plate, two and one. He tried to paint there that time. He did. Among the audience are the uh, IHSA All-Conference baseball and softball players. We got to announce their names before the start of the game. Yep. Most are still here. They got to get in free with their uniform. Pitch up. One person who wasn't here, Cameron Everard from Heron. He's actually in Fort Benning, Georgia. Three and one to count. I heard that. And got a nice ovation. And how about a walk for Caleb Sievers? Drake Moss will come to the plate. Drake. As it looks like we may have a pitching change. It looks like they it looks might. like going to bring Daniel Garza in from left mm -hmm. to replace Urbina. And then going out toward left, Marlon Vasquez, number 31, I do believe, and that's what's on my roster here, Marlon Vasquez. Daniel Garza now will be the new pitcher. Big tall right-hander comes in, takes up his, takes in his warm-up tosses. As Daniel mentioned a while ago, first game tomorrow will be at 11 o'clock, and that's going to feature Harlingen, Texas, and Southern Illinois. Today's game started off at 11 o'clock we saw southern illinois eliminate japan 14 to 8 and i gotta just tell you how much i appreciate the tradition that japan brings to this tournament when they come here i watched after they took their infield before the game they all lined up on the third baseline along with the coaching staff and bowed toward the field before returning to the dugout, before the game. That's a nice touch. And then at the end of the game, after they had been eliminated, they all lined up in front of the crowd and bowed in saying thank you and honoring the game. Such a humble group and such a well-coached group as well. And they're, and they're talented too. And it's like I said, they made they had five errors in that game today. That's what allowed Southern Illinois to beat them was the errors. 14-8 to eight was the final score. And then you had Covina, California beat Harlingen, Texas, 7-1. to one. Greensboro beat Aroma Park, 5-4. to four. And it's 3-2 here. As Daniel Garza is the new pitcher, Marlon Vasquez is the new left fielder, and he is playing about as deep as you can play. They are cutting down the, the gaps in the outfield. No doubles. Keep everything to singles. The runner at first is Caleb Siebers. And at the plate is Drake Moss. No balls, one strike to Moss. The pitch off the plate, 76 from Garza. Defensively, Vasquez in left, Conde in center, Garza, Andres Garza in right. Martinez. At third, Balcone at short, Torres at second, Quintanilla at first. Cardonia behind the plate. The 1-1 one -one pitch right there for a strike. One ball and two strikes. You can feel the tension in the air. Marion needs to score one to tie. But keep in mind, Marion is the visiting team in this game. Mexico, the home team. Swing, foul tipped it at the plate. Called immediately by Chad Ozzy. Keeps the count at one and two. Stays alive, but just barely. He didn't get much of it. 
but he got enough of it. The runner at first, Caleb Sievers. That pitch is in the dirt and throw behind the runner at first. Sievers gets back. And the count now evened up at two and two. To everybody watching online, we appreciate you watching. Hope you've enjoyed the game. That is in the dirt again and blocked nicely by Cardonia. You know, this is the kind of game you want to watch. You know, no blowouts, just, you know, great pitching, timely hits. Fantastic plays. Yeah, great defense. Count is full. Runner at first, one down. Daniel Garza comes set. The pitch. A ball, the throw down, and that doesn't matter because the ball away is a walk to Drake Moss. Now Marion has two runners aboard. And it's Morgan Fricker. Fricker has struck out, popped out, and walked. And Moss over there at first representing the go-ahead run for Marion. It's three to two here in the top of the seventh. One out. Fricker hits from the right side. Looks at one away, ball one. You know, I've been looking at the stances of a lot of the ball players. Not one closed stance. A lot of them up to be open and even. Good coaching. Misses away again. Daniel Garza struggling with the strike zone here for Mexico. Not really what you like to see from your closer. Yeah, you want him to just fire away and try and get you know, to the plate as much as you can. You want to give your pitcher some time. Misses outside again, three and zero. Oh. Because if you're going to be playing tomorrow, you don't. You want to throw the least number of pitches as possible. Because there is a limit for pitchers in this tournament in the Colt League. I believe it's 95. 95 pitches in a 24-hour period. And that's why Friday's win was huge for them because they had a whole day of rest. Misses again, back-to-back -back walks. And Marion now has the bases loaded. Jack Harry will come to the plate. The defending Colt League champions showing why they are a team that shouldn't be taken lightly. They will wait their pitch. They will be patient. They'll get the big hit, as we saw earlier today. We're going to have a pinch hitter. Pinch hitter for Jack Harry. See if we can get the number. Pinch hitter for Team Mary. Number five, Ethan Golish. Ethan Golish comes in. One of the honorees mentioned before the start of the game. Mm-hmm. He replaces Hari here in the seventh inning. Pinch hitting. A, Bases loaded. A river to river all conference player stepping up to the dish. It's Golish. Golish from Harrisburg. Takes the first pitch for a ball. Two runs on six hits for Marion, three errors. They trail by one, they have the bases juiced here. Ducks on the pond, as they say. And one hit can give you the lead, definitely the tie. Another pitch just outside from Garza. And now if you're... He needs to slide his plant foot about six inches to the right because that's about how far he's missing off of this side. I was just about to say. Okay. You know the adjustment you make when you bowl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fly ball toward right. Going back on it is Garza. Makes the catch. The run is going to tag from third. We have a tie ball game. 3-3. Three, three. Long fly ball by pinch hitter Ethan Golish. 
And he brings home the tying run. And that is the second out. That's job one in the ball game for Marion is just get the tying run across. And they have done that. Runners at the corners now. Dawson Griffith will come to the plates. Now you try to get the go-ahead run. And that was a deep fly ball. That was about 10 feet away from the warning track. One of the longest fly balls we've seen in the tournament. And yeah. considering how deep it is over there in right field. And Aiden Cardonia wants to go out and talk to his, off to his defense. He's calling for him to meet him at the mound. And finally, they make their way over there. Boy, it's such a good ball game. Tied up at three. And we kind of knew that this, I mean, we knew it was always a possibility, but we just kind of had that feeling that Marion wasn't going to go away quietly in this inning. And they have not. It's going to be Dawson Griffith. Griff is walked, grounded out twice, both times to second base, and he bats here with two down. Base hit would give the go-ahead run to Marion. Pitch in the dirt, ball one. And you got to watch out for those low pitches. You don't want it to get to the backstop because then right there, Marion could take the lead. Drake Moss is the runner at third. He's got great speed. And nobody's holding him at third. In the dirt, blocked nicely by Cardonia again. As Garza takes his take his bucket off and scratches his head. Takes the ball back from Cardonia. Takes a stroll to the top of the hill. If it were me, I'd be saying a little prayer. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> Called strike. It works. 2-1. Two, two outs. Yeah, a lot of pressure on this battery, not just for Orbina to throw strikes, but also for the catcher to make sure that if it is in the dirt or in the turf, just block it and keep it in front of you. Knock it down. The pitch lifted foul, and Fricker was off on the pitch. Headed towards second, he'll return. <laughs> three, three game. Garza looks in, gets the sign. Torres is playing that rover position in short right. Pitch is low, underneath the catcher, doesn't get away far enough, but now. Runners at second and third. It's full count. Three balls, two strikes. Two outs, two runners on in a tie ball game. Three, three, the fans. It's really exciting. On their feet around Rent One Park. Garza from the stretch, lines the ball. It's fouled and out of play. The suspense. Wow, he turned on that one. The suspense is palpable in this place. And you can see the excitement from Makes Mexico. the hair stand up on your arms. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this all again. Runners at second and third, two on. The count is full, three and two, two outs. Griffith, the batter, the pitch, low and away, walks him. Bases are loaded now. And it's going to be Jack Ford that struts his way to the plate. Can't believe it's only day three of the Coth World Series. I mean, come on, that was some anticipation there. I know it. And this is a big moment for Jack Ford. He is over in the game. He has walked. He has struck out. He has grounded out. And he has the bases loaded in front with two outs in a tie ball game. Ford's due. He's due. The catcher. From Harrisburg, takes the first pitch for a ball. Inside, ball one. It looks like Urbina really wanted that pitch, but it just got a little bit inside the play. He is pounding 
that side of the plate. He is trying to keep it there. To guys on the right side of the box, it's away. To Ford, it's in. One ball, no strikes, two down. Base is loaded, the pitch. It's a chopper foul. Yeah, I think that's a good thing for Marion. Yeah, a break. One ball, one strike. As Aiden Cardonia picks up the bat, tosses it to Ford. I'm sure Luke, I'm sure uh, Ford was thinking I could have done a lot more with that pitch, but it was also in. So it's just a good thing that that ball went foul, so it gives him another chance to make some damage with the bases loaded in a 3-3 game. 1-1 one, one pitch. Two down. Up and in. Two and one. Outfield playing deep. Again, they don't want to allow any doubles. Nothing in the gap. Nothing down the line. Cut everything off. Keep it to a single. A single would score two. You got to keep it close. Two balls, one strike to Jack Ford. Down low, three and one as Daniel Garza is struggling to find the strike zone here for Team Mexico. And for Marion, just a really good job waiting him out, making sure that if he's gonna throw strikes, just pound it in the zone, but so far hasn't been able to make his pitches. And now in a 3-1 count, if it's in your kitchen, you swing, but if it's not, you let it go. One throwing in the bullpen for Team Mexico down the right field line. Daniel Garza is hoping he doesn't need him. He's got two outs, a 3-1 count on the batter, Jack Ford. Bases are loaded. Garza starts the pitch. Foul. Woo. Woo. And Brendan Bergen, who's on deck, <laughs> that was close. Yeah, and he nearly got taken out by yes, that. Yes, and he's got a smile on his face. <laughs> he escaped. Oh, this is so exciting. Good baseball. Good game, tied at three. A lot of fans are standing up right now waiting for this payoff pitch. Full count, two down. Bases are loaded. Garza's pitch, Ford swings. Base hit, right side. One run is gonna score for Marion. Here comes the second. The throw to third is gonna get the runner at third. And that was Griffith who was gunned down, but Marion takes the lead by two. Both the runs are gonna count. They cross the plate before the out, and it is now five to three. It should be five three. Both runs count according to Chad Ozzy, yes. As uh, it was Moss that scores from third, Fricker scores from second, and Jack Ford, the two RBI knock for Marion to give him the lead. Wow. What did we say? He was due. He was due. Now it's all up to the relief for Marion. Mexico's coming to the plate. They trail by two here at the Colt World Series. Have you been watching this ball game? <laughs> yeah. 
If you're just tuning in, number one, I wish you could be here, but since you can't, you're watching online. That This is the next best thing because we have such a good game. Yes. Marion has just taken the two-run lead in the top of the seventh, and Team Mexico now has the top of the order. Daniel Valle, and they need two runs to extend this game to extras. And this team is capable of scratching together a couple of runs as first one swings and misses through that first pitch. Andres Garza at the plate on the mound for Marion. Noah Arnold working his second inning. And umpire Chad Ozzie out to talk to the umpire or to the uh, pitcher, Noah Arnold. Giving him a new baseball. Arnold came in back in the sixth inning. And he's on the mound trying to close this out for Marion. His pitch misses off the plate. Almost 80, he hit 79 with that fastball. It was low and away. Garza in the game is singled, struck out, flied out. Bats for the fourth time, lines this one down the left field line. It's going to drop for a base hit That's into the bases. corner. One as he rounds first on his way to second, and he's going to have to pull up at second. A leadoff double for Andres Garza for Team Mexico, and they put the pressure on Marion right off the get-go. And we're seeing that emotion from Garza at second as he pulled into second. He let out a roar toward his team, and his team responded. It's not over yet. 5-3, Mexico threatening. And those just joining in, we want to say hello and welcome. Humberto Cruz. Cruz started out as a starting pitcher. He struck out nine while he was on the mound. But he's been hitting in the two hole here, an outstanding offensive player and a great pitcher. Big opportunity here as he has an RBI chance, the runner at second, nobody down. You want to get that first run across, cut this lead in half. It's a two run lead. Lays down the bunt, first baseline, it's going to go foul. It looked like it was going to be a beauty, but the ball took a little spin to the left and got to the left of the third base line. I know it would go down as a sacrifice, but that was a to bunt for a hit. I mean, he didn't square it before the pitch. It was on its way, decided to drop it down. Now it's it would be a sacrifice. But you need base runners, and that's what he was thinking. Marion was playing back. Now Raditz is even with the bag at third. Even with the bag at first is Griffith, and that... Pitch is taken for a ball. Yeah, that nearly got a piece of him. Yes, it did. We also like to say a hola, buenas noches, bienvenidos to our Spanish-speaking audience. And tell them Dave says hi. Dave, he says hello. Hola. <laughs> hola. 5-3. Base hit, left field. Here comes Garza around the plate and... The ball is miffed in left field. The runner takes off for second. The throw's in time to get him. The run scores from second. 5-4 is the score. The throw guns down Cruz at second. Yeah, if I were Cruz, I don't know if I would have went to second because you have the play right in front of you. You already know that the one run in front of you is going to score. You have to play conservatively here, and I think just a mental error there by Cruz. Caleb Siebers didn't play that cleanly and left, but his throw was on the money. They got the tag on Cruz. He goes 7-4 on the putout. And Cruz thought he was safe. Yeah. It was close. I, I can't tell you one way or the other. It was close. And now at the plate, Mijio Quintanilla. Big swing from number one, the first baseman. And he trails in the count 0-2. And Team Mexico's fans have been energetic all day, but they are alive right now doing the CSIP weather chance. Yes, we can. 
0-2. Off the plate, one ball, two strikes. The energy here at Rentland Park is unbelievable. It's electric. One ball, two strikes, curveball. One hopper to third, ran its throw across in time. Two down. Oh, it's getting down to the wire now. And who is it? Alessandro Falcon. Who else? Mr. Home Run Derby. Falcon comes to the plate. Noah Arnold trying to close this out for Marion. A huge win for whoever wins this game. First pitch is away, ball one. Yeah, no matter how this turns out, just one of the best games, if not the best game of the Colt World Series that we've seen. And we've got two more days, folks. Noah Arnold sets and throws, strike one, 80 mile an hour fastball. You think he's not pumped? Mm -hmm. He's got momentum. I'm he sure does. I'm sure he's got the jitters right now, but all he can has to focus on is to throw strikes. 5-4 ball game. One ball, one strike. Misses away. Two and one. Drops his hat as he throws. Yeah, first pitch was out. Next pitch was in the zone. Next pitch was out. If I'm Mexico, I'd be looking for a pitch in. Gerardo Martinez on deck. The pitch to Falcone. Fouled back. Evens it up. Two and two. He stayed outside that time, kind of breaking the rhythm a little bit. Falcone was, ever, was able to get a piece of it. How big is that gun down at second without going at the plate? It's, the, it's, it's a big difference. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch from Arnold. Curveball. Didn't miss by much. Mm. He was trying to come through, He was trying to come through the attic there. And if I'm Falcone, I don't know that I can hold off on that. Yeah. He takes it for a ball, and we have a full count. Good plate discipline. Game right here. Is it a walk, a strikeout, a hit, an out? Grounded right back to first. Or, or to pitcher, Arnold Gloves flips it to first. Marion wins this contest 5-4. to four. And how about that? The first win for Mexico came 5-4. First loss for Mexico comes 5-4. What an amazing game we saw here between them and Mary and the defending Colt League World Series champions. This felt like a World Series game. It absolutely did. Marion knocks off the Mexican zone champion, Team Mexico, in just a wonderful, that's as good a ball game as you're going to see. I don't care where you go. Yes. Little League, college, professional, Olympics. That was a fantastic game. And man, Marion hangs on to win it five to four. And it looked like it was ticketed for center field, but I think what happened was the ball just got into the foot of the pitcher and just all the difference in the world. And you gotta give Noah Arnold all the credit there. He came in and closed this game out, made the final defensive play flips it to first for the win marion knocks off team mexico here five to four five runs on seven hits four errors for marion mexico four runs on eight hits they did not commit an error so now mexico let's set the the, the table here for all the games. This is game 13. Winner is going to move on here. So tomorrow, this is the schedule up to date. 11 o'clock will feature Hallingen, Texas taking on Southern Illinois. The winner of that game will move on to play Covina, California. That will be a 5 o'clock game. The 2 o'clock game will feature Mexico, who just lost here, and they're going to take on Greensboro at 2 the winner of that game will move on to take on this Marion team who just won. So we could see a sequel could tomorrow see a night. see a sequel tomorrow night at uh, 8 o'clock. And wow, what a tournament. 5-4, to four, Marion gets this win over Mexico this evening. 
Thanks for coming up, buddy. That a absolutely was a ball game. That was one heck of a ball game. And you know what? This is only day three. You got two more days of this. So if you're in the southern Illinois area, come down tomorrow. Rent one park. It's five bucks. You get some good baseball. To everybody that's joined us here on our YouTube channel, thank you so much. We hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, we are going to be right back at you tomorrow starting at 11 o'clock with the first game on Monday of uh, the host Area, Southern Illinois, taking on Hallingen, Texas, starting at 11 o'clock. For everyone here at Rent One Park, associated with Pony Baseball and the Colt World Series, Steve Miller, his staff, and the fine folks here for Rent One Park, and my partner Danny Vallier, we appreciate you watching the Colt World Series here. And, and on. Go ahead. And I was going to say, before we leave our Spanish audience, buenas noches from Marion, Illinois. Good night, everybody. <laughs>